Pittsburgh Steeler fans, welcome back to another episode of the Scobro Show. This is Steel Curtain Network editor Dave Schofield coming at you Tuesday night. It's before 9 o'clock. It's 10 to 9. Oh, no, are people even going to know to come watch? But you know what? We got tired of sitting around and waiting. We said, let's go. Let's do this thing. So with me, as always, except when he's not, is my big brother, Rich. Rich, how's it going tonight? It is going okay. I am finally kind of back in d- pretty decent health after my pneumonia stuff going on, other than the lungs being slightly out of shape for the time of year. Um, but um, I will say, actually, the biggest excitement going on here has been um, it is now officially baseball season. Oh, it's, that's so. right. <laughs> that's why you're wearing a pirate hat. <laughs> I, I I actually got this from um, some some of my coworkers were were going up and it was Clemente hat it, is it giveaway. Clemente? Yep, so it's the Clemente with twenty one hat yeah. and um they went up. I think that was they were playing the Yankees last year and my the one guy that works for me is a Yankee fan and went with everybody and so they he was like yeah I don't want a Clemente hat here you go <laughs> yeah. All right, so, there you go. Fantastic. But, uh, but hey, for those of you jumping in Kyle, on the live chat, oh, go ahead. What's up? And Kyle, three games into his high school baseball season so far, so that's why the, that's the main reason okay. for baseball season. I'll just say, how's he? I know opening. He had what two RBIs in the opening game, right? Yep. So, what's the record? Three and zero. Oh. They are three and zero. Oh. Very good. They Very are good. Three and zero. Oh. Yep. So we'll, we'll we'll keep track of maybe we'll we'll keep track of Kyle's baseball season. It's his last one, last sports senior year. Good stuff. Congratulations. Last high school year. He, yeah. Last last high school year. He's playing yeah. next year. Yeah. Yep. So so uh yeah, so that that's great. But hey, I just as people were coming in, I some people were like, wait a second, you're early. Yeah, we're early. Like I said, I was like, do we want to just sit around and wait, or can we just go ahead and get get to talking? That was one. And the other thing is, some people might have noticed, well, where's the intro music? We lost the intro music. If you're listening to us on audio, guess what? You've got intro music. Uh, we're we're changing up some stuff uh, on the YouTube side kind of because we have to. Uh, there's an issue we're having with YouTube right now um, with, with monetization and everything. You may have even noticed you have lost the ability to leave a super chat. That's part of the thing. Um, we are basically trying to clean up a whole lot of stuff. We're not exactly sure what the issue is. So we're kind of stripping down to the bare bones to hopefully then figure out what's going on. So if you're wondering, hey, where'd the music go? Where are the where are the fun sound clips? You know, they're, they're, they're not with us anymore. So what matters is that we're here and we're talking Steelers. So let's dive into some news because, Rich, we've had four players added to the Steelers in the last two days. Now, none of them were officially announced by the Steelers, although two of them, I would say, are happening when Omar Khan at the, at the owner's yeah. meeting says two of them. So when it says it's not announced by the Steelers, they'll, they'll get there with all that stuff and the formalities. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I had a salary cap article. It's going out tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, uh, bright and early. That's because I finally got the numbers for Van Jefferson, which was from the first week. I've been waiting for those for forever. And as soon as they come in, boom, all these other players that we don't have the numbers for. Now, one of them we kind of have numbers for, so we'll get to, but yes. we'll take them in order. We had no additions from since our last show up until yesterday. yesterday. So it's really only the last two yep. days. So the first one was – the report that the Steelers are signing wide receiver Quez Watkins. I got that right, right? Yes, okay, I got that. You got that sure correct. Got that, that name right. Yeah, yes, got, you that, did. got that correct. Uh, from the Eagles, spent his first four seasons with the Eagles. He's a guy that did some kick returning, slot receiver, one of those things. Probably not a, a, a huge contract signing, I would assume. As I wrote in the article, I said, I don't think this precludes the Steelers from adding another wide receiver at all. So, I, is is it is this even a player that's guaranteed to make the fifty three man roster? Rich, any thoughts there? No, not a guarantee for the fifty three man roster. We'll have plenty of opportunity to make the fifty three man roster. Would not oh, yeah. surprise me if he makes the fifty three man roster, but he is not a guarantee. 
Yeah. And what's interesting, because, you know, it's a guy that's done kickoffs. You're thinking, well, you know, maybe they're trying to make sure they have somebody on their team that does that does kickoffs because, you know, Goblin Iguabuke was a, is a free agent. Um, so they didn't really have anyone. But we'll get to how that changed more. I thought, well, maybe because of that proposal that's out there, they might want to at least have somebody. We'll get to some of these rules here after we hit the players real quick. Then Omar Khan announced quarterback Kyle Allen and defensive lineman Dean Lowry. I'm pretty sure if I'm I'm going from memory yes. here with these names. You're correct. Um, yes. All right. Th those two, I don't really know much about Lowry. And when it comes to Kyle Allen, I just know him as a name because he has started some games in the NFL when he's been called on as reserve. I think he started the most with Carolina, if I do recall. Um, but to me – Hey, now you don't have to ask questions about what are they doing for a third quarterback. Um, uh, exactly. And, and yes. any thoughts on those two beyond that? No, not not really. Not again. I wouldn't call them big signings or anything like that. Just just filling out the you know working on coming closer yeah. to filling out the ninety man. Yeah, I, I don't like. I said I'm going to have to look into. Hopefully, somebody out there like a KT Smith or someone is looking into some stuff with with some of these new guys, especially Lowry. Right now, it's just got the same kind of feeling for me as like an Armand Watts was last year. Yep. Uh, that kind of signing, that kind of level, uh, ro rotational guy. If he can make the team, because remember, Watts last year he was a healthy scratch the first game of the season before Cam Hayward got hurt. So maybe even you know one of those guys that's that's there to to bring some experience, um, and, and to add to the rotation if at all possible. And then today was right at right at around four o'clock. News dump. News Steelers dump. two year deal with the way the way I did it for the article for tomorrow for the salary cap. I think I said running back slash wide receiver slash slash. Kick returner Cordero Patterson. Yes, that's the way I put four it. I used to all pro, I, four time all pro. used to yeah. used to love having him on my fantasy squad because he fit both the wide receiver and running back slot. Yeah, used to love it. Yeah, so. yeah. So that was just someone else um, that. I, I, please, you can ask all you want to in the live chat. I don't know how the Steelers are going to use him. I don't. I mean, nope. he, he played for Arthur Smith, so you can say, oh, we, he's coming back with Arthur Smith because maybe Arthur Smith knows how to use him. Maybe. I'm not going to try to predict that. He is one of those guys that you could do a number of things with. Is he is he someone that could give you depth at, you know, is he your third running back and your fifth receiver and your kick returner? Sure. That sounds great to me. Could he be more than that? We'll see. The reports are two years, $6 million. Um, that was, I mean, it, that was the same thing that the Steelers gave, uh, Deshaun Elliott. Uh, so his worked out to be, I think two point, I got to remember what that number was, uh, 2.125 or something like that was his cap number for this year. Yeah. So it's going to be somewhere around there, depending on how much was base salary and how much was signing bonus. Uh, but so we, I, I don't know the exact number against the cap, but honestly, it's not going to break it. It's not going to do all that much rich. So, so you like that one? Look, Patterson, like I said, he gives you – what's cool about him is he gives you depth at multiple positions. Yeah. Um, and depending on how creative you want to get, you know, you know, honestly, could he sneak in to be wide receiver four? Yeah, he could sneak in to be wide receiver four. They could have a set – they could have packages for him Just where him, he's yeah. wide receiver – and what's cool about him as a wide receiver, he's a wide receiver you can motion into the backfield and hand the ball off to. You know, or it's like vice versa. Or right, or start him in yeah. the backfield and, and put him out in motion and get him in, you know, just some versatility. It, it, do I see him playing 50 snaps a game? No. no. I see him getting off, you know, 15? offensively, yeah, 15 to 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? And if he's really making a big difference, then you might see him out there more. Um, to me, what this tells me is – now, remember, I have to premise this. I do not count Connor Hayward as a running back. I count him as a tight end that sometimes plays fullback, but I'm not counting him as a running back. Steelers only had two running backs that carries last year. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. No one else got yep. a carry. Jay, um, Anthony McFarlane, I think, had two catches early on. 
I think it's safe to say that I think the Steelers will have three running backs get carries this year. I, not saying he gets a lot. I'm just saying it'll happen in there. It, 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 as, as long as everything works out and he's healthy at one point or another. So anything else you want to say about these players? Because I kind of want to talk about some of the rules. Nope. Go ahead and hop, and hop on. I think okay. yeah, we so we're going to talk about some, some more news. Uh, the first segment here might be a little bit long because of the news. From the owners meeting, some of the rules. All right. First of all, let's tackle this one. The tackle. No. The the swivel hip drop cat tackle. All right. I'm not going to say a lot about it. I will say this. They added the word swivel in there because it's it's not just any time you do the hip drop. It's a specific motion of it. One. Two, I don't know that this is going to be flagged a lot on the field. I think it's just, I think it's more about the fines. Just like when a running back lowers their head to initiate contact, do they flag that in the game? No, but it's against the rules and they fine it. That's Jalen Warren. He got a bunch of those here with him. Some rescinded, some reduced, but they kept, they kept at least initially giving him fines uh, for those kind of things that were never flagged. So I don't want this thing. They're already telling the officials they don't want them to call it unless it's clear and obvious that's exactly what it is, which is almost, to me, sounds like they're telling them don't call it. <laughs> the, uh, almost saying don't call it, but we'll enforce it from a fines perspective. I will say this. And I thought it was very interesting that Art Rooney the second said this today. This is the type of tackle that he claims took out Le'Veon Bell in – what season was that? Was that 2015? 15. Or whenever the Vontez perfect on the sidelines. And at the time, Steelers fans were screaming, that type of tackle needs to be taken out of the game. Well, here we are eight years, nine years later, and they're trying no, to take that no, type of tackle no, out of the game. No, no, no. And now they Steelers fans screamed, are like, well, they they were not overregulated. They, they were so, not trying to take, no, we were not screaming for that tackle to be taken out of the game. No. Mm -hmm. We we're screaming for Vontez Perfect to be taken out of the game. Well, for and and you and Vontez Perfect using that style of tackle. Now we the Seahawks fans did put a lot more blame on Perfect than the type of tackle. But what else was wrong with what he did, other than yes, he still continued to ride him down at the sideline, other than the type of tackle that it was. You know, can, can I just ask a question when it, when it comes to that? Sure. Now it, it just then explained to me how, how do we tackle how do you tackle somebody from behind if you catch them? Okay, well the whole it's the whole idea of grabbing a hold of them, lifting your weight up to crash it down onto the person's legs. That's really what I from what I understand is coming down to. They're not wanting to have defenders do that tackle that rolls them up onto the defend on the offensive player's legs, like what happened with Mark Andrews this past season. Um, that's what they're looking to do. So um, it's funny because Steel Dog 88 says hip drop tackle is a rugby style tackle. But this specific one that the, that the, that the NFL outlawed, from my understanding is so did rugby. Rugby outlawed it first. That you can't wrap the player up there and drop yourself onto their legs. Um. That's my understanding for, from what I saw somewhere. Um, oh, here we go. Afton. Afton confirms this. She said that Marky D said the rugby league banned it. I don't know that every – well, yeah, she she fixed her typo. <laughs> the next one. I don't know that every rugby league across the world did, but at least, you know, the, the more unified ones, I guess. So um, that's it, – it's a technique they're wanting to get out of the game – but at the same time, it's one of those things, like with the running back lowering their head, it's really difficult for the officials to call in real time. So that's why they're like, okay, we're going to work on getting it out, but we're not. The last thing they want is a bunch of penalties of something that it really doesn't fit. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it. All right. Other rules. Kickoff rule. Or do you want to say anything else about the tackle? Or are you good? Um, other than I'm kind of there a little bit with, with J.J. Watt in, in terms of, you know, I, I sit there and I think it's like, you know, you can't hit guys high. You can't hit quarterbacks low. You 
can't do this. You can't do that. It's like, at some point, it's going to turn to flag football mm-hmm. because they're taking away so many different ways to get guys on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it's tough. And, but and, it's the... and, they're, and they're like, because you're injuring them. Well, the issue has been guys have gotten more athletic offensively and have the ability to mm-hmm. to fight against things. So how do you combat it? You know, um, who, who was it to put out there then yesterday when this came out was like, you know, you're you're a defensive back, and you're trying and catch trying to tackle by catching Gronk from behind. How do you get him on the ground? Are you basically saying we have to just let him go and score a touchdown? No, I mean honestly, if I'm you trying know, to if I'm trying to tackle Gronk from behind, I'm not grabbing his waist and falling on his legs. I'm trying to take out. I'm I'm trying to wrap or hit his legs. Rather than the waste, that's me. Um, right. You know but, how many times have you seen a defender even swing their arm to try to hit the foot enough to get him to but, trip? You but know what but I'm see saying? what? But see, this is what I see then coming down the road with all this. Then so then you see more guys trying to get in and go low, grab that guy around the knees or someplace like that. You're then still follow yeah. falling your weight on the back of them. The injuries are still going to be there. Then everybody's going to say you get rid of this, and you're going to get to a point where if a guy is past you, you're not allowed to tackle him. Yeah. I see. I don't see it going this way at all. I see this like a horse collar tackle that people are like, oh, it's so ridiculous that they're taking this out of the game. And you know what? It saved injuries because it is dangerous. I, I saw a lot more injuries at the high school level with that kind of tackle. And yes. and people just anymore they expect it. They're like, oh wow, you can't bring him down like that. I, I think now, that I think eventually now what I have nature. Well, what I have is a lot of ifs. The, yeah. To me, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Okay. Do I still think that this could be good for football? Yes, it could be. If there continue to be ways then to be able to get mm-hmm. ball carriers on the ground yeah. that do not injure them. Yeah. You know, my worry is what happens then is guys figure figure out another way to get guys down. Next thing you know, that's causing injuries. Then we get rid of this. It's like, it, it, I don't want to just see it. Oh, well, it changes from this. We go to something else, still having issues. We ban that. We do that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's not how I want to see this go. If this plays the way that I know the NFL wants it to is we get rid of this, the injuries go away, everything gets back to normal, and we're playing football, and seven, eight years from now, we're not even thinking about this. Mm-hmm. If it plays out that way, good. Yeah. But we have seven or eight years potentially to see if it plays out that way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The biggest thing I don't, I, I don't want to see, like I said, is is the penalty coming in and calling something that really isn't it and it changing the course of a game. That's what I don't want to see. So, yeah. Understood. Um, speaking of changing right. the course of a game, now they're trying to get something back to relevance with their kickoff rule. So it's very similar to that of what the XFL did last year, um, except the players are starting five yards further back. Because uh, they're lined up to forty. Bottom line is, is there's no fair catches. Kickers got to put the ball between the twenty and the goal line if they don't want it to to be worse. If they come up short of the twenty, it's just like kicking it out of bounds. If they kick it straight into the end zone, it comes all the way out to the thirty. Um, if it hits in play and rolls into the end zone, then it's only the twenty. But uh, it's it's the whole notion of having the return there, but by putting the players cl- further down the field, not having to run and get up to all that crazy speed before they start smashing into each other, that uh, that it's just not going to be as high of a collision. Um, to me, at least they tried to do something before they just took the play out altogether and just said, oh, okay. Didn't they do that in the preseason or at something or at some point where they said, you know what? After the, or maybe that was one of the other football leagues that they just said after a team yeah. scores, you, the, the ball just at the 25. Yeah. The team. Um, I just remember that was somewhere. Um, like the, maybe it was USFL or something, but uh, at least, at least they tried and they, and they had special teams coordinators trying to work out something that would make sense. So, yeah. So, so you can't move until the ball and until the ball either is caught by the player or, or hits the ground. lands or hits the ground. Then they, then they move. We'll see how it works. 
I would not be shocked to see this. Maybe there's then so many returns that are broken because of a rule of where they're lined up or where they're doing this that they might end up tweaking it some. It's only for one year, so we'll see how that goes. Any thoughts on that before we hit one other thing? Or two other things? I, it might, might be nice to see kickoff returns come. Uh, and, and I do like the whole way of then you know, having guys – up to ridiculously high speeds and high high speed collisions um i mean it will still be speed collisions but not guys that have been at top speed for 30 yards yep um i don't know interested to see yeah. kind of interested to see how it goes yeah and i also like that you know the kicker's back there it's 10 guys up and then you got nine guys in a 5 yard zone of, of the receiving team where you could have up to two guys back. You don't have to have two because um, it says you have to have at least a nine in that zone. You can do 10 because if you only have nine, then guess what? Someone's coming through uh, yeah. <laughs> unless somebody's going to block two guys. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. I, I think that I'm, that's going to be interesting to watch the preseason. That's when I'm going to be really intrigued to see that. Um, I- Look, and I don't blame the NFL for this one. I kind of like the idea of we're going to put this in for a year and then we're going to evaluate it. Yeah. Yep. So now there's, um, let's see. Um, it's funny because Kathy says anyone, anyone mentioned here, it it didn't come up. Anyone mentioned finding the refs for an egregious call? Uh, you know what? I don't know how they do that with the refs, but I will tell you this. They, um, I don't know if they passed that with the, or or something. I'm pretty sure they did about the 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 replay official can assist with mm, yep. some like bad calls of a certain degree. Um, we'll probably find out more about that one. Uh, the trading debt, the trading deadline moved back a week mainly because they added a week to the season. That was the Steelers' proposal. Other teams wanted to move back even further, but the NFL doesn't want to move it back too far because they don't want it to be like hockey and baseball where teams just dump their players. They, they, they don't want that. Yeah. I, and I like that it hasn't been that way for the NFL. So I'm okay if it, if it doesn't turn into that. But there, I mean, it used to be teams didn't trade at the trading deadline, but now that's starting to happen a lot more. There was another rule that if I read it properly, I was surprised no one was talking about. It's a rule. It's... The way it, it, they said it, I actually took a picture of it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read it, if you don't mind. Um, I don't know if you would, if you caught any of, of this discussion in our staff Slack channel, Rich, or not. But this was like Rule 6. It says, by competition committee, amends Article 17, Section 17.16c, to permit each club to place a maximum of two players who are placed on an applicable reserve list on the business day of the final roster reduction to be designated for return. Such players will immediately count as two of the club's total designations. The rule has always been a player has to be on the team's 53 man roster for 24 hours or one or not even 24, one league day, whatever they consider one league day. Yeah. Um, to then be put on IR if they were ever going to return. This changes that, that if you have, if you can have up to two people on IR, during the preseason, and you could designate them that they'll eventually return. You don't have to wait and get them on the 53. You could keep them on your 90. You could put them on IR and then designate them there on that roster cut down day. For example, even though his injury wasn't going to let him to come back, Corey Trice went on IR early in trading camp. If that was an injury that they thought, you know, maybe he could make it back in November, they could designate him. He would have had a chance to come back. Now, remember, you only get eight returns all season. But that's right. going to be, if you designate it, it's going to count even if they don't come back. So I was surprised no one was mentioning this. I really was. Did, is that the way you read that rule? That's the way I, re- I read that rule. And um, was it this year or last year? Who was it that we had to wait and sneak on to IR and then hope we could you know, bring somebody back up? I want to say it was not this year. I want to say it was this past year. I want to say it was the year before. Okay, what what was we had to do that with? Remember, because it was it was oh we cut we cut somebody or or something and yeah and we're sitting there talking oh well you know we got to slip somebody to to, there for a day slip in the IR and then hope we can get them back and the better way to do that is with a veteran so they can't be yes yes yeah yeah. 
So I, mean, I think I remember talking about that last year saying, okay, who's a candidate that the Steelers could say, we're cutting you, don't sign, we're bringing you back, we just have to get so-and-so on IR. Hopefully that's, you know, they don't have to do that anymore. They can designate two people well, to do that. You could still so do it, but you cool. have the ability to have two spots where you could yes. do that without having to go through all that. Yeah. And if so, that yeah. and if that's really how that rule is, I, I kind of like it. It, it, it just yeah. takes away – it, it just is like everybody has to then has been doing things the way we were just describing. And it seems ridiculous that they have to. So then it's just, you know what? Everybody gets two spots where then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because John Meyer says, well, the CA three with the foot. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. It see, was. And, and see, here's another thing. Um, but that's also why young players, if they go on IR, during the during training camp and stuff, they end up actually have to go through waivers. Teams could claim them off waivers if they go on IR during training camp. So now, let's say you have a second round draft pick and you don't want to put them on IR. They're going to be they're they're going to be done. You could even you could wait until that time and designate them to return or something like that. Um, that that just changes that up a little bit. Um, if I understand that correctly. Rich, we're going to go ahead and take a break so we can come back and finally get to our topic of okay. offensive line. And actually, we're doing tight ends as well. So if you're with us here um, on YouTube, Facebook, X, we're not going anywhere. If you're with us on the audio side, stick around. We'll be right back. All right, Steelers fans, here we go. Let's roll on. We had a lot of news to talk about between rules and players. That's, you know, other than the that first Flurry of free agency, which which you weren't here for for that show. Um, that's the most we've had to talk about with players. Huh. As I said last week, we have to take one week and combine a couple of players to make sure we can get everything we want to in, in before the draft. I was maybe going to combine the inside and outside linebackers, but after talking with one Jefferson Bartholomew Hartman, he says, you know what? I think you have enough for a whole show for both of those. There's not really a lot to, to say about tight ends. Nope. There's because not. the Steelers had four on the roster last year. They've got the same four this year, and that's the only four. So you've got Pat Frermuth, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward, which is a tight end slash fullback, and Hot Rod Williams, Rodney Williams. They haven't had anyone. They haven't lost anybody. Rich, we kind of mentioned this briefly before the show. Maybe an un undrafted free agent or two, a tight end. Maybe. Having the camp. But no, honestly, wouldn't even trial. have to if they don't want to. Yeah. Yep. You, so, you um, and the answer, Steelers, Pittsburgh. Yes, you missed it. We already talked about all four players that the Steelers had. It. So, you can you can go back and check that out. So yeah. So to me, that's tight ends. What's going to be interesting this year is more on how they're going to be used. I don't know, but you don't. I, I don't think there's really much any question with personnel, right? Correct. So, Which is why it made the most sense to combine tight end up with offensive line. Because really, you know, the, We're kind of the Steelers, <laughs> right, the Steelers could bring in an undrafted free agent or two and add a couple more bodies for camp. They could roll with the room just as it is. No, I'm not, they'll, they'll and have I don't think, any, yeah, for, they'll, for they'll have at least they'll have one more. Lines. They'll have at least, at least one. one more. At least one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, so, um, the, yeah. The big they're not going is, out. We're not going to. We're not going to see a free agent signing at tight end. We're not going to see a draft pick at tight end. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really think that the Steelers are good at the tight end position as of right now. Yeah. The only so, question is, are all those guys going to make the roster? And you know when we're going to answer that after the preseason. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. That's we'll have a much better idea. So, yep. offensive line. Steelers haven't done anything. I mean, outside of releasing Mason Cole, they haven't done anything with the offensive line. Nope. Which is interesting because there's a lot going on with offensive line the last two years. Now, when you do that, you're in a situation where you don't necessarily have to do a lot of the offensive line. But the Steelers don't have a starting center do they not i mean they do. they do they do it's not like they, they wouldn't don't. have someone yeah they it's not like there's no options 
They have guys. They have, I mean, my goodness, both their starting guards have played center before. But do you really want to move one of your guards to center? Okay. Nate Herbig was the reserve on the interior of the, the, the line. Spencer Anderson in uniform, all 18 games if you're counting the playoffs last year. Played, played in all, I think he did he play in all of them on special teams, or there might have been one or there might be some in there that he didn't. But he was dressed for all of them. That's another one. Then you, you've got Ryan McCullum, who was on the practice squad last year and the year before and was elevated for one game this year when the Steelers had what they had a, they had a game where they had a couple of linemen. A couple of yeah. linemen? No. Well, I know that James Daniels missed a game. I was one. So it's not like you don't have anyone that can play center, but you would think the Steelers would want more out of more out of that position than what they currently have. You would think. that's the big one. Yes. yes. So Omar Khan mentioned about they're not done. It said they even mentioned was it Omar Khan or was it Mike Tomlin? I can't remember which one. I'm getting all I'm getting all their stuff mixed together. But about even the possibility of even a trade for a center. Bottom line is Steelers fans, we could talk until we're blue in the face about center. Right now, we just gotta gotta be patient. Rich, do you think this is a double dip position? Do you think they will they will still add via free agency and the draft? There, there there's going to be there's going to be things going with uh, like I see another tackle I see more with center. The question is going to be is do we do anything in free agency before the draft or are there thoughts about the draft or are there thoughts about potentially both? Yeah, you know, that that's our discussion. Um, I, I really see more going on with with the Steelers adding at least one more tackle and but. And I would say two centers. Yeah. The question just is going to be, how are they going? You know, I see those three additions coming. Okay. All right. The question's going to be how. All right. And that will I tell agree. you, and, and the how will tell you we'll, a lot. We'll get a little bit more to that by the end of the show, if you know what I mean. Okay. Yes. So. And, and, and the how will eventually kind of determine or help show what they think they have already in the room. Yes. If that makes yes. sense. Yes. It, it, that'll what the Steelers do between now and the first weekend in May is going to tell us a whole, whole lot about what they think about the players they have, you know, what they address in the draft, how, where, how high they address it, those those kind of things. That's going to, and it, honestly, some of it might frustrate Steelers fans uh, when it comes like, to any position. Right. Like, let, let's, uh, you know, I, I just throw hypothetical kind of things out there. Like, let's suppose in the next two weeks, the Steelers go out and sign a tackle, a free agent tackle that we look up and say, you know, hey, he's a serviceable backup, can play both tackle positions, you know, a good depth piece. And then you, you then you're thinking two two ways it could go. The Steelers could still be looking to draft a tackle, maybe mm -hmm. later in the draft, or, or or have somebody that they think they can get later in the draft that they have a higher grade on, or maybe there's that saying, "Hey, we're gonna ride with the with the two guys we had last year, and this guy's kind of going to be the backup." Yeah, you know, that, that they signed. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's. It's I don't I don't know what ways these things are going to play out, but as they play out, I think it's they're going to say a lot. I agree, and I'm going to offer a another option out there. Sure. Shortly, the reason I say shortly, let's let we start at center. Let's move out gradually. Let's knock out guard real quick, and then I'll really get you to that. I don't really know that there's much to talk about guard. I don't think there's much to talk about at guard. I, I'm I'm pretty happy with where we are yeah. with guards in terms of starters, in terms of backups, in terms of just the that the Steelers, if they didn't make a move of any kind at the guard position, I'm not I, I'm I'm okay with it. 
Okay, so real quick, just to give a review, it's, it's all over the place where Steelers lists offensive linemen on their website. Some they yes. call you know centers, guards, tackles, and some of them they just call linemen. Okay, oh well. So here you go, Ryan McCullum. So, R- sorry, Ryan McCullum is the only one that's listed purely as a center, but he's not the only pure center. Guards, they've got Isaac Sayamalu, Nate Herbig, and Joey Fisher. They don't have James Daniels. They have him listed as an offensive lineman. Um, they just have OL next to him. Both him and Spencer Anderson. I find it interesting that he's listed as OL. I wish I would have noticed this before this offseason because maybe that did say something that perhaps he's someone who could move if they need him to. I don't know. So those are the two guys listed as offensive linemen. Then your tackles are – oh, it skipped on me. Uh, Dan Moore Jr., Broderick Jones – um, Dylan Cook, Helen Deesh, Tyler Beach, Devery Hamilton, and Anderson Hardy, according to the Steelers' website. Now, so I just wanted to put all those names out there. Just put them there. I still think the Steelers are good at guard. I wouldn't be shocked to see them add a, add a guard or so in an undrafted free agent, rookie minicamp, something like that, where they have more bodies at the position as they go. Or they might be fine depending on how much they add at center, if there are also people, you know, then they can keep their, their, their guards at guards. To me, the biggest question with guard is do the Steelers extend James Daniels before the start of the league? They can save a little bit on the cap. Good. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, me he's, too. he's my, my goodness. I'm trying to check here. He, he currently he's pl- he's played well enough to earn it. <laughs> Yeah, right. he's only 26. And, and he's, and only 26, and has played well enough to earn an extension in my eyes. Yeah. That if the Steelers want to do that, I have no problem with it. Yeah. 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 So that's that's fine with guard. Now I want to get to tackle, because you mentioned about that there's options and other things going on there. This is how I feel about tackle. Yes. Go big or go home. I yeah. said it on the Q and A. If you're going to, if you're going to upgrade Dan Moore Jr. at tackle, and some people are like, oh, well, I mean, anything's upgrade. No. Is Dan Moore Jr. a serviceable offensive tackle? I would say serviceable was about as far as I would as I would go. Is that a position that the Steelers could definitely afford to upgrade? Yes. When the Steelers were were dealing with at that time where I did the breaking news podcast where the Steelers had traded their their quarterback from last year and all they had was Russell Wilson on the roster, I was saying, hey, if the Steelers have to go and look draft to help with quarterback, that might take offensive tackle off the table for another year because there's just not enough to address right. at the top of the draft. Now they don't have to. So I to me – I'm still all for offensive tackle in the first round. I'm not saying they have to, but to me, if the right guy is there, you take him. I still go back to 2021 and say if the Steelers would have drafted one pick higher, they shouldn't have taken Najee Harris and they should have taken Christian Darisau. He made it, he made it that far. And yeah. he's one of the top 10 tackles in the league. So I would I, I would have been mad if they wouldn't have done that. As soon as he went off the board right before the Steelers, then I was fine with the Najee Harris pick. If he was there and the Steelers didn't take him, I was going to be mad. So I'm I'm there. So it's always one of those things that depends on who's there. If another one of the, if a nice offensive tackle is there and the Steelers feel like what they want to do is center, or if they've done something else in free agency or whatnot, makes that not a huge pressing need in the first round. I'm all for it. But I don't even know how much of a tackle I want in the second round. Maybe. Maybe if, if there's a pretty good one there. Beyond that. I, I don't even care. I don't. I'd rather than not waste the pick. Go big or go home. Get something better than Dan Moore Jr. Or go with the young guys that you're trying to develop. That's me. Go. And when I say young guys are trying to develop, if you see the Steelers not sign another offensive tackle, not draft an offensive tackle, I think it speaks volumes. For two people, 
and that is Dylan Cook. Yep. Who it seemed like the Steelers really like last year. I liked them in the preseason. And another one that their practice squad guy that apparently some people are saying, whoa, this could really be something. The six foot seven Kellen Deesh, if I'm saying his name right. It's D-I-E-S-C-H. I'm pretty sure you pronounce it Deesh. If the Steelers really like those guys and think that those guys are to a level that they could be pressing Dan Moore Jr. And the way the draft falls, they don't take an offensive tackle. Then I understand why they do what they do. Yeah. So I don't want to just sit back and say, oh, well, like I would love for Spencer Anderson to, to, to work out for the Steelers. But the fact that he couldn't he couldn't even press Mason Cole last year for playing time makes me say, is he good enough to, for what the Steelers really want there rather than just depth? So that might be what these guys are as well. Or the Steelers might be really high on them. It's really hard to tell. So that's so, why but, I think what they're we'll doing more, is really going to answer I, a lot of questions. Correct. We'll know more as everything plays out. Yeah. So – like I said, I am all for I something about it. I just would love it just seems like it would set up too well for the Steelers to go Mims in round one and Van Braun in round two. Although some people like you could get him in round three, but if you want him, get him in round two. And you add a Georgia tackle, a Georgia center to go with your Georgia tackle and your Georgia tight end. Um, that that would just be intriguing to just to, to, to say that way. Um, but if you're going to don't mess around with someone who's more like a Dan Moore esque level player, you know, I was going to say, you know, using your, your, your lone fourth round pick like Dan Moore jr. Was, or your last third round pick on a tackle. It's someone who might be able to maybe someday knock him off either, either go at it or, or save it and keep it in your back pocket. That's just me. So what are your thoughts on, on that whole scenario, bro? Let's see. What, what what was the word you just used when you were talking about, you know, getting all the guys, having all the guys from Georgia? Uh, yeah, you know, just, uh, well, I had a different word come to mind. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about interesting. I, I, I was going more the route of uh, Vincini. <laughs> uh, and the fact that it's more inconceivable. In, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting um, for the season. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but uh, I'm just saying it would be, it, it would be, it would be intriguing. It, it would. Yeah, right. For, for me, you hear me do this with some of the other positions they have, they, the, we talk about here and there too. It's like, I, I know there's going to be some things that happen. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. And part of the reason I don't know how it's going to happen is because I'm not sure exactly what the plan is that the Steelers have, where, you know, and who they're thinking about draft wise, you know, what they really want to accomplish when it gets there, um, who they still have an eye on in free agency to say, Hey, maybe you get a guy that's a one or two year stop gap, you know, like a Mason Cole was at center. And or something like that. I, I don't know. There's going to be some things happen, but it's going to be another one of those domino effects. What you see them make a move in one spot on the offensive line, then may tell, may give you a better idea what their thought is in other spots on the offensive line. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. And like you said, there's a chance it could play out right now and not a whole lot goes on for a little bit. Then you yeah. start to then stop and think and wonder, hmm, maybe they are a little higher on a couple of those young tackles that that were further down the depth chart and on the practice squad last year. Maybe they did see some things they, they liked. I don't know, but there's going to be some more movement in some ways. Yeah. Um, it's just, to me, it's then knowing that things are going to happen. For me, the fun part is waiting to see how it plays out. Yeah, and the thing is, no, we don't know what, you know, Dylan Cook, my goodness, he didn't dress, I think he dressed for two games, never played a snap all season and all that, but this was a dude that came out of nowhere and played so well, he made the 53. Right. That was supposed to happen. But to me, when it comes to tackle, if you, if you want a replacement for Dan Moore Jr., 
it's not in free agency because tackles are too expensive in free agency, in my opinion. Yep. If you're going to do it, do it in the draft and do it in one of your first two picks. That's that's it. Now, I'm going to say something else. Some people might might find this offensive, but me, as someone who played offensive tackle, not for the longest time, someone who coached offensive tackle, whether it's tackle or guard, not being able to switch and play the other side is weak. If you can't play both spots, then I don't think you're as good of a player. That's the biggest knock I have on Dan Moore Jr. If he has to play left and not right because he's so much better at left and right and everything, and he even made the whole the whole comment of, oh, going to the other side, it's like wiping with the other hand, <laughs> uh, which I thought was hilarious, but I don't buy it. I don't. I don't. And I've said this before. The, the 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 system that the varsity was running, I didn't do this with when I was coaching the freshman team because I thought it was too confusing for the players. But this but the offensive system our our varsity team was running, we didn't have a left tackle to right tackle. We had a strong tackle to weak tackle. They they switched sides so the same guy was always lining up next to the tight end because they felt that was more important than having them on the same side. I, I don't like the – if they're like, oh, well, Kevin Dotson was playing on the wrong side and he's uh, – Kevin Dotson's problems was more between his ears, I, I think, than anything. Yeah, If you I can agree. only play one side, then that shows that 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 you're you're not as top tier of anything else. I use Marquise Pouncey as an example all the time. That dude could have played any position in the offensive line. There was a time when they were dealing with injury. Mike Thomas said after the game, you almost saw, saw um, Pouncey at tackle. You almost saw him a tackle during that game because they needed someone else to tackle if things wouldn't happen. So to me, if you say they can't play both sides, so people are like, oh, Broad, you got to get Broderick Jones left tackle. I think he needs to get the left tackle because that's where he's going to eventually be. But also, if the if he's struggling more in pass protection than in run blocking, what better way to, to continue to grow than to be at the position that's not as important with pass blocking? Not that it's not important, but it's a whole different level on the right side than the left side. It just is. Let yes. him continue be, to get be, better at pass blocking. Be, and be, on, be on the right side so that while he's working on it, if if he messes something up, the quarterback can see it. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I mean so, that's what yeah, it comes I, down to. I, I think I think it would be it would be a travesty if they're going to move him to left tackle like they should, unless they draft left tackle this year instead of right tackle. I, I don't like that idea. If they're going to move him to left tackle, if they don't do it by 2025. If it's still right tackle for this year, for part of the year, or even all the whole year, depending on how things play out, then I think you have to decide, are we keeping him here or are we putting him at the left side? You have to make the decision by that time. But to think that he has to go there right now, I don't agree with that because I think he's good enough to play either side. And if you had to switch him in the middle of the game, I think he'd be fine. Because yep. I think he's good enough. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and so, so, so John Meyer so, says has to be a footwork thing, right? Yeah. But honestly, you've got to do different footwork for different things anyway. If you're not always constantly stepping with the same foot to start all the time, depending on what what if you're reach blocking to the right versus versus pass blocking. You know, to the left and things of that, you know, reach right, reach left. It's still you're still having to step and work on those things the same the same way with both with both feet to be ready to do the various things you have to do. So it is a footwork thing. But honestly, if you're good enough, you're going to be able to do it. You, you just yeah. you just do it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I was going to say is, you know, so so let's say that the Steelers rolled with Dan Moore Jr. and and. You know, that, that we stand pat with the tackles, right? With yeah. Roger Jones, Dan Moore Jr. And let's say you were in a game, the third game of the season, and Dan Moore Jr. gets hurt, okay? Mm-hmm. Roderick Jones could move to left tackle immediately. You know, because yeah. let's say you're bringing the next guy, say, so you know what, we'd be happier with this guy at right tackle. Roderick Jones go right, goes right over to left tackle, yeah. and things are fine. It's oh, a great luxury. Fine, fine. But it's, you know, but that's what you need to be able to have in 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 offensive line and you can say the same thing at guard you don't see it necessarily play out as much at, at guard as as at tackle 
But, you know, and there are places, I understand at guard too, where guys might be a little more comfortable, especially, you know, when you're talking about um, being on the right or left of the center. I, I can understand that to an extent. Yeah. But I think you still got to be able to do both. Yep. Yeah. Like, I would expect, you know, Isaac Sayamala to be able to, you know, move. It, now, it's a whole different story going from guard to tackle. It really right. is. But going from right tackle to left tackle or vice versa shouldn't be as much. And remember, Broderick Jones got – he started off. Dan Moore Jr. was out. Broderick Jones yep. against the Ravens. Started and played that whole game at left tackle. I thought he wouldn't relinquish it, personally. Personally. So, um, it's funny. I'm going to say this. Russ, love you. You're you're one of my favorite guys out there. But when you said Dan Moore is like Dotson with penalties every time Najee has a big run holding number 65. Dan all Moore year. Jr. had two holding penalties all last season. All year. All year. Two, two holding two. penalties. Yep. Two. And one of them was, I'm trying to remember, one, one was, I know one of them was on a pass play for sure. So, yes. yeah. So, yeah, he didn't, he did, he did that. Um, I mean, he had three penalties total last year. Well, sorry, that includes one that was declined. So only two penalties that were assessed. So, yeah. So th that's the thing. He gets such a bad rap at times. You know, he gave up eight sacks last year. That's not good. But you think about that, that's less than that's less than half a sack a game. Although, well, exactly half a sack a game for him because he missed a game. Yep. So, 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 yeah. But do you also have to change how you're blocking in order to cover for him? That's another question that you have to ask. So there's a lot exactly. going on with the tackles. Exa there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You don't, you don't. Those are things that unless you really know a lot and are watching the game and watching the blocking schemes, you don't, we don't necessarily yeah. know. Yeah. But the coaching staff does. Exactly. So, so they, they have a better idea of what they were asking others to do and what they're, and I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, they might have to, they might give him help when he's going up against Miles Garrett. You know what? Anyone, <laughs> and there, there was a lot of times they didn't give him help. Yeah. There was a lot of times they didn't give him help, but a, a, a lot of people see that. So, all right. Anything else you want to say? We're going to come back for a final question to, to, to do one more thing with center. Anything else about our line before we we're running over a little bit? Um, no, but I will bring us up a good comment. <laughs> yeah. We talk about those sacks. <laughs> yes. And he always spun left the dance out. That is correct. He did. That yeah. was his that was his bailout was that spin yeah. left. So you can even look at the fact that Dan Moore gave up eight sacks. How many were, did Kenny were spin four, right into? Were four, were four of those aided by the fact that Kenny Bigot spun out right into the sack? And Maybe. I will say this. Didn't I all last off season constantly rail and talk to people about, wait, you're crazy. When the Steelers and Kenny Pickett's rookie year, when, when he threw that touchdown pass to Najee Harris to win the game over the Ravens. Yes. That all oh, he had pressure. Dan Moore got beat right away. Kenny Pickett was, didn't step up into the pocket. He once again, he spun yep. right to where Dan Moore was blocking the guy and almost couldn't make that pass. Now you see it. Hopefully now you see it. But I kept saying that all out last offseason. That was not Dan Moore. That was Kenny Pickett. And no, no, no. I was told how wrong I was. But you know what? We saw it a lot last year, too. So, all right. You ready to take a break, Rich? Take the break. Let's get back and have Get a back. Break. We'll do our quick five minutes, and then we'll do the big all question. Right. So if you're with us here, we're not going anywhere. Audio, we'll be right back out of these messages. All right, Steelers fans, Woo. we had an awful lot to talk about. We had to squeeze tight ends in there as well, but did not expect, you know, so many so many moves for the Steelers in the last, I guess I'd even say 36 hours, I guess it would be, um, yeah. is the best way to say it. But uh, got to get my timer ready. Rich, Got I, I got our question again. I asked again if you wanted to ask it. You said, no, you go ahead. This was actually inspired by me watching Wheel of Fortune last night with my wife. One of the contestants talked about that he had an ongoing thing with his with his friend. They were talking about, and he had a, he had a number that was supposed to leave really high of all the jobs he's had in his life. Rich, 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. What what old jobs have you had? I, now I know the answer to most of these, but this is just fun to talk about because some of these we might not remember for each other. What jobs have you had? You have two and a half minutes because then I have to say, what jobs have you had so far um, in your lifetime? Um, I guess I will start with what was my first job, which you don't remember what my first actual job was. It lasted, it was a three week summer job. I would call it, um, I guess I'd call it landscaper, um, I would dig, digging and replanting trees. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like eighth between eighth and ninth grade. Hmm. Um, then, uh, I was a cashier slash deli worker. I forgot about a, that one. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that one, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I, I, I was a, a Night painter. Shift, man. Sometimes I'd wait yeah. up until he came home, trying to scare you. <laughs> uh, uh, I was a painter. I was a huh? plumber's assistant. See, you never got the fun of being the plumber's assistant. Oh, no, I did not. Game, did you? No. Man, how did you luck out there? Um, those of you that don't understand, that's because the plumber was our father. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'll right, tell you what, ahead. that that stuff I did those summers with when I I'd get pulled to be his assistant was right up there with Mike Rose's dirtiest jobs. I'm telling you, yeah. from from coal boiler work to um, crawling under a building and digging a trench in a two and a half foot crawl space with an, a foldable army shovel. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. To, just 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 to let other people know because uh, six. Um, Sixburg Six, you said I'm a plumber, as well. Yep. Our father, he was the, he was the master plumber for the school system. So you're talking yeah. about having to do plumbing for schools. So yeah, yeah. So some pretty crazy stuff. And then, um, and no, our no, my dad did not pay me. The school system did. Yes. So, um, mm -hmm. all right. Let's see. Other, I know. Hold on. I'm sitting there thinking. Yeah. Um, let's see. The painter, then teacher, and uh, you then, forgot resident assistant. Uh, uh, whatever resident yeah resident assistant <laughs> um uh, actually before that I, w I was computer lab assistant see you, oh, okay. you, you probably didn't know that i was a computer lab. i know now you've said it I, I, i'm remembering it you know, oh geez that. there's pratt go away why aren't you fishing <laughs> yeah. um yeah. uh let's see uh da -da 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 teacher and then um i was a tutor i was a driving instructor um, I'm say you were a driver's ed teacher. That was a good one. Yep. yep. Uh, was a. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> You're your fishing buddy. My fish, yeah, one says, of my fishing buddies. How about professional net boy? Net boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's okay. see. I'm thinking what else I had. Uh, resident director, uh, fly fishing guide. Yep. Um, oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, you know, I could get into then, you know, resident resident director and yeah. area director. Air director. In other words, a, a student con a student conduct coordinator, a director of student life, um, a public address announcer, uh -huh. um, a podcaster, <laughs> a podcaster. A, a writer for uh, a blogger, for website. sports blogger. Yep. yep. Um, I could probably think of a few more jobs yeah. that I've done that I've gotten paid for every time, yeah. but I will turn it over and let you get a few in. Okay. Yeah. A few of mine were all right. I, um, I was a, a, a salesman for, in a water sporting goods store that eventually turned into a water sporting goods slash sporting goods slash NASCAR store. So that I had to learn about NASCAR stuff. Uh, I all like you. I also worked um, for a while in the summer of of planting trees. Uh, where I got paid for that, I worked uh, some landscaping with uh, with a friend of mine's dad. Uh, also worked as a as a student painter. I worked as a weight room attendant at college. I also worked. I was a tutor. I was a physics tutor. I was an RA. I was an RA a year younger than anyone else. All my family were. Everyone was an RA. But I was the one who do it as the youngest. I was the only who did it as a sophomore. Hated it. Quit. Never did it again after that year. Um, probably just needed to wait to, to do it again. I was. Oh, what's it called? Where you're the person that checks people in at night in the in the halls? Oh, the uh, night attendant. 
I, I, I did that as well in college. Oh yeah, wait a minute. I was um, the night attend. I was the night attendant coordinator for a year. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Um, yeah. no, no, I don't think that's when I did it uh, because I was I was already gone by then. So let's uh, see. So yeah, I did that. What, oh, what else did I? I, I was just, I was a, a a student painter um, on the paint crew, but I never got pulled out to be the plumber's assistant. Uh, I was. Okay, we'll just go roll roll into it real quick as we're almost done. Uh, hi, um, a high school AP physics teacher. I was a football coach. I was a track and field coach uh, at, at the high school level. I was a track and field coach at the college level. Uh, let's see. Then I was let's see. That was more tutoring too uh, to do that. I technically, I guess, before that, I was a substitute teacher for a short moment. Um, right, right, uh, right before that. Man, still trying to remember all, all the various things. Um, now you could now I guess I, I I was a community manager for a website, then a writer for a website, then an editor, um, podcaster, and now I would say I am technically my my role is I am the analytics manager for a podcast company. So there's more stuff in there that uh, that 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 I probably forgot, and so did you. But they said, "Boy, you guys really did a lot." If you uh, go back and think about everything, still Lock says, "Boy, um, you Scope Bros really got around." Not that we really got around, but it was just like we've part of the way we were raised, or, or like oh, we were willing to do you know whatever to make some money. So I forgot about that. One. <laughs> oh yeah, Dave. Yeah, you were an author. Uh, I, Jerry, it's written. I was trying to get it ready to publish last summer, and FFSN has me completely. With, with getting everything off the ground there has just had brought that in. So the goal is to have it out by the end of this coming summer of the second book. It's written. I just had to, I just have to make some, 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 some editorial changes. I already have them written down what the changes need to be. I just got to go in and do it, get it all set up. So yeah, uh, book number two should be coming out. Once I think of a title, <laughs> I haven't titled it. It's the biggest problem. So, but now, you can find Ghost Warriors on Amazon right now. If you like I, I, um, I, I will. Can I say one more thing on this topic? I know we're over time. Yes. My most favorite job ever that I still do some, some as I will call it, pro bono work on from time to time. Um, one of the jobs that I really did enjoy the most was driving mm-hmm. instructor. Yeah, I was going to say, you you were, I mean, fly fishing died. Come on. Y'all said to like fly fishing guy, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I was good at it. What was funny is I worked for my best, fr- yeah, Pratt. If you're still out there, you know, had to work for Fleming doing that. <laughs> yeah, and and he 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 was the better fly fisherman, but believe it or not, I was probably the better guide. I had the better temperament for being a guide and taking other people and working with them because you would work on as the a stream. I, I partly yes, yeah. So that and it's I funny. can, yeah. We we could say we we opened it up for one question before we ask the big question because Wilson Pov wants to know aside from SCN what's been y'all's favorite job you said driving, driving instructor. instructor me I gotta say you're gonna be surprised it's track coach football coach is good too but track ever since I did track it, it it's I've always had so much fun with it I talked a little bit about that when Jeremy Betts was on for you when we had the faux bro. Um, about that was the first time that I really saw sports as being fun. Um, the whole reason I became a teacher after getting a degree in physics and mathematics was because I wanted to coach. That's why after I stopped coaching, I didn't keep teaching for nearly as long. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to so, ignore sorry. me in the live chat, Rich. Uh, I, I, I know. <laughs> Come and send me a text message next time. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here's the big question, Rich. This is the big question for everyone tonight. Remember. Wait until I put it actually typed in for you to give your answer. We're going back to center. Okay. We're, we're looking, we're fast forward to September. Looks like the Steelers are not going to Brazil. Reports are they've narrowed it down to either the Browns or the Packers. Um, so the Steelers will not be leaving the country this year uh, for a game, it appears. But week one, Steelers, they line up to start their 17 0 season. The first snap on offense for the Steelers will be snapped by a player who is, here are your options, currently on the roster, acquired via free agency or trade, or acquired via the draft or undrafted free agent. So draft, free agent, or trade, or on the roster. 
week one this year. Can I answer? Yeah. Draft. You're going draft? Yep. Okay. I will then go the the other one, which I was going to go with this anyway. I am going free agent slash trade. I think that they're going to acquire somebody that's going to do the job for a little while. And that way, whoever they draft doesn't have to start right away. But we'll see. See, I, see I, I think whoever they draft beats that guy out. Which would be nice. Which would be perfect. Don't, don't want a Kendrick Green situation where he gets it by default. Correct. Because no, no one else is doing any good. We want it to be that they're just, we want a Marquise Pouncey situation where he's just yes. too good. You can't hold him back. So here we go. I have it out there in the live chat. Here they're coming in. Woo. Afton was ready. She's going draft. Steelers Pittsburgh is going trade. Technically, if it's a free agent, you're still right because I put both of those together. But uh, way to way to call it even more. Uh, Richard Adamson says draft. Uh, Steel Dog eighty eight says draft because he thinks it's going to be Powers Johnson. Um, Steel Steeler Chick forty six says draft. Pittsburgh Toddy says draft. Kathy Ford says draft. Jared Devil says draft. I'm really surprised at this because the Steelers, unless they have to, try not to start their rookies the first week. That's no, but I think a lot of people are seeing it like me. I think that they'll yeah. have somebody there that's a vet, but I see them potentially getting somebody good enough. That, that's good that's enough. the dream. That's the dream. Yes. That really is. That's going to be the best for the Steelers. Okay, Wilson Pava says... Says if it's not trade, it's free agent. So that that one, uh, Valley Ford says draft the center. I mean, I'm, I think they're going to draft one. The question is, are they taking the snaps week one? Okay, um, and that's why George Rice says free agent to start, but they're going to because they're going to draft one also. Uh, Reginald River says draft. Uh, John Myers says draft. He thinks it's going to be Frazier in round two. Um, Andy Goblin says on the roster, going specifically with Daniels. Says it's going to be wow. Daniels to start. I, that's not crazy. Uh, it's, it, no, not it's not crazy. crazy. It's not crazy. It's, that is a possibility. Okay. I thought more people would say on the roster. Uh, Thomas Riley says draft. Um, let's see. Tim, Tim Pratt, the second, says already on the roster. Okay. Brian Brown says draft. Gavin Anthony says draft. Uh, Brett Howell says free agent slash trade. Well, I said or trade. I said slash. Sorry. Uh, Sherry Richard says free agency. Uh, let's see. Kyle Johnston, Johnson, sorry, almost messed you up, almost messed you up for the punter. Okay. Uh, says roster, probably. Okay. Uh, it's, it's funny because it's funny because Afton says the pickings are slim at free agency. Yeah. It's the, the guy bad's been talking about Brian Allen is who he's wanting to see come in, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. Do we have any more? Uh, there we go. Jeremiah Yoder says draft. There we are. Um, there it is. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, be interesting to see how it works out. Like you said, your what you said is the dream scenario. I think what I said is the more realistic scenario. But we'll see. And watch it. Watch us both be wrong. <laughs> of course. Watch it be James Daniels or something to start off, and then then go to a draft pick or something like that. So very interesting to see how that's going to go. All right, we went over a little bit. We had lots of news to start. Um, and then that was fun talking about the jobs. Uh, and, of course, it was a lot of fun talking about, about the offensive line and tight ends. So, hey, make sure you're checking out all our shows. Our shows are still coming on YouTube. Sorry we started a little bit earlier tonight, but, my goodness, we wanted – we're, we're, we're going to be to get done close to 10 o'clock. Yep. So, so. Uh, they, whether it's on YouTube, the audio-only side, make sure you're checking out – FFSN and all that they have to offer on the NFL feed. You get Jeff Hartman on there with KT Smith, their one show on there uh, that, that you can listen to every week. I know uh, Andrew and Jeremy are doing a lot of draft stuff on the NFL channel there. And we've got other other Steelers channels with FC, uh, FFSN. There we go. We've got Black and Gold Blueprint with Roy Countryman. We've got uh, Steelers Afternoon Drive with, um, with Smitty who was on Jeff's Let's Ride a couple weeks ago, Zachary Smith. Uh, we've got Around the 412, which is his as well. Uh, we've got Bre Breakfast with Ben's, which is all Pittsburgh stuff. I, I check out the Madden Monday every week uh, just to hear what Mark Mark Madden has to say, who uh, 
sometimes you can tell when they recorded on Monday morning versus Sunday night because I think uh, – what all he's had to consume recently. Sometimes it changes, changes <laughs> how much he, he rants. Um, so those are interesting. Uh, you can find all those. And of course, make sure you're checking out steelcurnetwork.com uh, where you can get links to these podcasts on there, on the website, lots of other uh, content going out there. Who rich. What do you have to say to close us out here tonight? All right. So first I'm going to, to, to speak a, a bit in code. Um, so <laughs> just, just, just in case anybody is out there needing to know or thinking about this, um, you know, my next good looking break in the weather appears to be next Friday on my birthday, not this coming Friday, but the following <laughs> Friday on my birthday. And I have big plans then for that day. So, um, giving someone out there plenty of notice in case, <laughs> um, since you have fellow, fishermen in the same area the, <laughs> so in the live um, chat right now look it, it it's been fun first for me is it's been kind of fun to get back up to um get my health back up to speed yes. here so that i can enjoy this this stealer stuff a little more because two weeks ago when we had all that stuff happening i felt so horrible that i didn't get to enjoy that as much as i think i would have yeah. but it is nice to get back to feeling better getting excited about Steeler football, seeing some moves that are going on. Um, you, you know, Dave and I do these shows and we talk about these different positions. The biggest thing I try to do with these is I try not to speculate too far into what the Steelers could do. I, I'm, I'm one that will sit more and say, well, th they could do this. They could do this. They could do this. They could, you know, there's different directions they can go. Cause that way I, I don't feel like I'm putting, you know, all your hope in one area. All my hope, hopes and dreams in one area. Um, it's a, well, they do this. Well, good. Then they might go this direction with this, with this position. Then that might lead to them doing something else different than with a different position. And, and it's, it's, then I, I get to kind of guess at what they're doing without being like, well, they have to do this because that's mm -hmm. not how I like to operate as a fan because they don't have to do anything. What they have to do is what the, the front office as a group sees they need to do to, to construct this roster. Me as a fan, I, I, I don't get any say. You know, I, I could have what I think is a fan, you know, us as fans can have what we think is a fantastic plan for the Steelers. Well, they don't have to listen to us because we're not getting... <laughs> we, Dave and I have had all these different jobs. None of them has ever been to be a general manager. That's correct. <laughs> and I don't think we have anybody in our live chat that's had that job either. So, um, so as fun as it can be to, to, to speculate, to guess, to, to, to think about what we need, what we would like to see them do. <laughs> to speculate and recollate. <laughs> speculate and recollate <laughs> as to what they might do. Um, you know, in the end, it's, it's, it's not our call, but for me, just, watching it come about and happen is just a lot of fun and we're what now almost yeah more than two weeks into the free agency period um you know and, and a lot and there's still more that can happen there but i'm already then starting to look at what the sealer's been doing in free agency and stop and think about how what they're doing could potentially shape what they do in the draft which I find to be fun and interesting as well. So for me, there's just more and more excitement coming up through the draft. Just, you know, what even small moves, like between our show tonight and next week, the Steelers might make one move. Well, that one move though, could really start make you stop and think, wow, well, look what they did here. Well, wow. Maybe they're then thinking when they go into the draft, maybe that changes my thinking on what they might be doing a little bit. That's the fun. That's the enjoyment. Just trying to us as fans piece it all together. And all we can really do now is sit and wait for the next domino to fall. I can't wait. <laughs>